Hey, sir. We live. You want me talking to Zoom or you want me talking to live? We're going to talk back and forth. Whatever makes you comfortable, AT. Whatever makes you comfortable, okay? I'm going to talk into the computer. I might occasionally look at yeah, the Yeah, occasionally but, glance yeah, over to the phone. Yeah, we are. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. All right, all right, all right, y'all. We live. Welcome to E-Hoops Performance YouTube and Podcast channel and show. I have a special guest, one of my teammates from University of Texas. She's a Longhorn. We Longhorns. I want to welcome Ashley Fontanet, also known as AT. Hey, hey, what's up, y'all? <laughs> what's up, AT? How you doing? How you doing? What you been up to? What you been up to, man? You know, just in school, living life, trying to stay safe out here. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a struggle, but, you know, we're working through it. Yeah, so, so you, you are in, you're in Houston right now, going to, going to school, right? Yes, I'm in Houston. I just finished up with my first year of law school and I have finals left, so I will be completely finished in a week and a half. -ish. Okay. Cool. We'll so we'll 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 dive into law school and that uh transition to law school from basketball. But first I want um everybody to get a little uh background introduction about who you are. Um, you know how you came up and how you got to be this successful and, and smart student athlete. You were able to play, how many years you play overseas? Seven. Seven, Seven years, years professionally overseas. Seven years. Now she's getting ready to be a lawyer so I can call her when I'm in trouble. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but no, let's, this is Ashley Fonson that you guys, uh, she goes by AT. So just give a little, Give the kids, like, what, what position do you play also? So I want them to kind of understand your basketball uh, background as well. Okay. All right. So, um, like Ernie said, my name is Ashley Fontanette. I am 30. Ooh. Um, <laughs> Young. <laughs> I play point guard. Um, I play shooting guard as well overseas for a little bit, but my, my main position was point guard. Um, okay. Born and raised in – Born in Austin, raised in Pflugerville, um, right on the, the edge of Pflugerville in Austin. Uh, but I went to Conley High School, and I was fortunate enough to stay in Austin and go to school in Texas. So that was a blessing. My parents were able to see me um, throughout college and grew up playing with the Lady Knights first. And then, uh, yes, go Cougars. You know, John B. Conley High School. Um, <laughs> I think Ashley, uh, Ashley, the other <laughs> Ashley from Connolly on, on the uh, live. What's yep. up? What's up, What's What's up Ashley? We miss you too. Um, but yeah, so I played with the Lady Knights and then we joined with the Lady Warriors and then we became Austin Elite. So okay. that was who I played with growing up. Um, you want me to jump right in there to pro or you want me to talk about the recruiting process yeah go ahead and give a little uh spiel about your recruiting process like how did that go for you you know what feelings were you going through as a, a junior and senior um so so we can give a little bit of um advice or just share your experience for these young kids that are going to be going into that right now or you know okay. they are juniors right now and all right yeah so my uh, my path was a little different than everybody else's or than a lot of people's. Um, I didn't have, I wasn't highly recruited um, going into my junior year. I received letters, you know, because things were different for us when we were coming up. Could, couldn't speak with people throughout the process. They couldn't actually talk to you until you were junior. Um, so it was just yeah. letters for freshman and sophomore year. They were real and, strict. And very, very strict. Um, so I wasn't getting a lot of attention. I went to camps the summer um, after my junior year. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's when I started to kind of build up a little buzz. Um, I kind of narrowed it down to the schools that I wanted to, that I was interested in and chose, that's how I chose which camps I was going to go to. Okay. And I went to the Tulsa camp and actually received my first offer on spot at Tulsa. That was, you went to Tulsa? was crazy. I you know, that's my Tulsa backyard, camp. Tulsa. Hey, man, it was it was crazy, though. Like, And after that, it was, like the process after that was just a whirlwind. Like, 
came back from Tulsa, um, almost didn't even go to the UT camp because I was just dead tired. We had driven to Tulsa, came back. I think I got a little bit of sleep. Yeah. My mom was like, she called me and was like, pack your stuff. I am coming to get you and you are going to this camp. I was like, but mom, I don't want to. <laughs> um, but I honestly, when I saw the UT facility, that was it for me. Like I knew at that moment, that's where I wanted to go to school. So you were sold on the facility. <laughs> I was sold among the other saw stuff. me play. I was sold. I was like, this is where I want to go. I saw the weight room. I was like, this is where I want to work out. This is where I want to train every day. Mm -hmm. um, so fast forward to AAU that summer. Um, I honestly think that was probably one of the best summers that I ever played. Um, coaches kind of came out of the woodworks at the end. But once I got the call from UT, it was a wrap. Like, yeah. Coach and G called me, look. <laughs> Yeah, I was so starstruck. I was like, "Oh my God, she just called me." But my son was like, "I didn't sleep for a couple of days after she called me." It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's. I mean, I say that to say, you know, I didn't. I wasn't a highly recruited person. Um, mm -hmm. and so if you don't have offers now, it's okay. My offer came right before I started my senior year. Literally, I wasn't. I didn't commit early. Like literally right a few weeks maybe before senior year started that's when I got my the offer okay to go to Texas and that's when I committed okay that's cool let's let's stay right here for a minute because that that happens to a I feel like that is um a lot of kids can um relate to that you know and they're looking for their scholarships and, and they might be seeing other kids on their team or uh, that, that they know get all these scholarships and get the hype and uh, contacted and all that but yet they don't have a lot or they haven't got their scholarship yet where was your mindset knowing that you know it, you you weren't being highly recruited and I don't know why but you weren't being highly recruited um, what was your mindset knowing that I, I wanted a scholarship so how do I continue to go forward and not get sidetracked um What's crazy is I was one of the younger players on my team. Like, so a lot of the people that I grew up with that I played with the entire, my entire childhood, they went off to college okay. um, the year before. And I think there was really two of us that were just left. Um, it was me and it was a younger player. Um, and so that kind of, I guess, drove me. I knew what I wanted. And so it was the only thing standing in my way would have been me. So I knew I was good enough to play at the next level. It was just a matter of where I was going to go. Um, and so I think I went out there every every day, like, this is what I want. I'm going to show y'all that this is what I want and I should be here. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it was it was a confidence thing. And, you know, once you're playing well and your confidence is riding high, people really, they can't tell you nothing. There's nothing, nothing that anybody can say. And confidence is huge. It took me a long time to learn that. But yeah. Whether you making shots, you missing shots, there's always certain things that you can control. Mm -hmm. You can control your effort. You can control how hard you work on defense, whether you're going to get a rebound. You're not always going to make shots. But coaches pay attention to other things. They do recognize the intangible. So I think it's important for players to know that just because you're not the, the highest scorer on the team, like you can do other things to contribute, and coaches are always watching for that. Absolutely. Um, what would some of those other things be like just a couple um, examples so that kids know uh, it might not always be about um, scoring like what are the intangibles that a coach needs on every team energy 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 energy, energy. Um, defense mm -hmm. coaches always need somebody who's gonna go rebound attitudes yeah they are watching if you get taken out the game your first thought cannot be to go kick the trash can over because you are upset. They Don't are watching the jersey everything. Off. Do not rip the jersey. They are watching everything. So, yeah, yeah I think just be mindful of those things. And that's – it It comes – it's it's a process. Mm -hmm. You don't have – like, you're not always going to be reserved. There's going to be times where you're going to be frustrated. But just know that people are always watching. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, like you said, there's always going to be times where you can be frustrated and you might not, you might, you might do something that's not in your character, but as long as 
people know who your character is and that you can get back to that baseline of who you are, you're respectful, you're a hard worker, mm -hmm. you clap everybody up, even if you're not playing on a team, you're high-fiving, you're not like not missing people when they come through because you're not in like that type of person. We can all yeah. see that off rip. And yeah. the coaches, the coaches number one, are watching that. They're watching the how are you, um, what's your character? They're watching that because <clears throat> when they when you get to college, they don't want to deal with that. They are At they home. are not they're not even gonna send you home. They're not even gonna invite you. Like you're not gonna be able to be sent home with your attitude because right. they don't want that uh, on their team. So I encourage everybody to you know have that good good sportsmanship, but also have that passion and also have that attitude. Like I'm a competitor. You can compete right. and you can play the game in a safe way. Um, and um, how was I going to explain it? And just having good sportsmanship uh, right. and being respectful, being respectful to the referees. That's another thing. My mom's a referee. And dude, if, if, <laughs> if, if I was not respectful as a coach, I know that much. <laughs> yeah. <it's okay>. as, <laughs> I, I, I don't think athletes understand the reputation that precedes them um, when they have a negative, nasty attitude. Yeah. One ref is going to have a – if you have a game that you're, and, you're, and you're nasty, that one game could really mess up your re reputation. And they talk. And they talk. The pregame is about certain players that have crazy attitudes. They're not – they're already off rip in the back room while y'all warming up. They already talking about you, and they're, they're ready to give text. <laughs> yeah. just because they know the type of player you are the, the same thing for coaches they already know how mm -hmm. um they talk about they have game plans for the game to keep the game under control so they have to know who has high tempers and what people might do bobby knight out he's a you know what i'm saying <laughs> they gotta know because they have to control the yeah. game and keep everybody safe that's but that's a whole yeah. nother uh awesome video that we should we should talk about um there was i wanted to touch on this before we go into your procure career um you said something about it took you a, a while to kind of develop your confidence and mm -hmm. I, I just want to I want you to go into that um you know maybe tell us like when you had low confidence what it was what about and then how how it changed <clears throat> how it changed for you over time um I would honestly say um so my sophomore year in high school um high school was always was always good but playing AAU, AAU for us was always more competitive. I think mm -hmm. we've gotten back to where there's a balance now between high school and AAU. Um, but in AAU, I think I was a sophomore. It was my sophomore summer before my junior year. And so I really just wasn't playing much. It might, it might have been a freshman too. I wasn't playing a lot. And so I was kind of bummed out. You know, I'm on the team, but I'm just really not playing. And it was difficult for me to kind of like get up and go to practice like, I'd always been like the go-to person, but now I'm on the team and I'm I'm riding the bench. I mess up, I'm coming out, and I just don't I don't know what to do. So my confidence is shot. And so we had a um we had a tournament where some of our older kids had went to um they went to a camp, maybe the Nike or Adidas camp. And so I was there with our team. We were at a tournament. I want to say it was in Belton temple area <laughs> mm -hmm. and we're playing in a game and I don't know something just clicked that tournament and I my confidence it was like a confidence booster I don't know what happened I started hitting shots and it was all, like it was like I was back in high school like back in high school ball where things were just easy and so I think that really helped me mm -hmm. as far as knowing that I was good enough to play. I think we ended up winning the championship that that tournament. I mean, it was it was a little tournament, so it really didn't mean much. But okay. it did everything for my confidence going into the next tournament, which was the end of the Oregon Trail. The <laughs> which what? Is the, bigger, no. the end, of, end of the Oregon Trail. You know the Oregon tournament, the big Oregon tournament. Is that what it's called? Huge. You say Oregon yeah. Trail. That's – I'm thinking about that game, boy, that Oregon Trail game from back in the day. End of the Oregon Trail. <laughs> it's a big tournament. Stop playing with me. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> all it's right, all right. I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so going into that, I think we, um, man, it was crazy. That was, that was a tournament we went to. We played against uh, the uh, 
Elijah Wan's daughter, Abby, the Gilbreth sisters, um, the West Coast Elite walked in the gym. People was lined up on the wall, and it was like crazy. And we won. And we won. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Question. Question. Were people lined up to see mostly your team or the other nope. team, or was it a mix? Oh, they was lined up to see them because you got you got the Gilbert sisters, uh-huh. you got the Elijah Wands, you got uh I don't think the Paris twins was on that team. They was on the older team. Um Yeah, they played they played my year. I think Italy Lucas was on that team, maybe. I don't know. Okay. They had a bunch of high name players on the West Coast Elite team. Like they were like, like the top dogs. And we met in the uh we did lose our first game. So we met in the Constellation Championship. But we made it there. And yeah, they was it was coaches. I'm talking like major D one coaches. I think that's when we walked in the gym. We were smaller than them, of course. They're huge, mm-hmm. and coaches lined up, and they're like, "Oh, we got this!" And we was like, "Shit, y'all, y'all got this!" <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Yo, so I feel like I love those games. If you're not here to see me or my team, I. I love that game because it's it's a great opportunity because you've been if you've been doing what you're supposed to do, training, mm-hmm. working your butt off, getting smarter, getting be- getting better as a player, you should live for these moments where you, people are there to see other people be- and you can slip up and get on on the scene or get seen by other other colleges because they're not they're not there to see you. They don't expect right. to see you balling. And they're like, "Who is that?" Right. I'm a team on the other oh, team. You don't right. care what you playing. As soon as you start it's hooping. Not there. And they're like, guess what? They're writing it down. Yep. They're writing it down. They're trying to see who her parents are. Maybe we can, mm-hmm. you know, that's how they do. So there's always somebody watching and there's always an opportunity to, you know, gain another follower or gain um, another uh, eye, uh, admirer uh, as a coach uh, to you as a player. So mm-hmm. that's why you have to, you have to be on on every game. But that's not realistic, but you have to be passionate and you have to do, you have to play hard every game. They might see you in a bad game where you usually, usually hit about, I don't know, you, you a three point shooter and you, and you hit about five, you average, like you good. And they, and you, you, you're not in your game. You ain't hit nothing. But maybe you hit a three for the buzzer beater. And they're like, who is that that hit the, she done missed 20 threes <laughs> all game and she hit that? Right. You gotta be ready. You, you gotta play the whole game. The confidence to shoot that last one, right? Confidence to it shoot. Don't matter that how many I miss. She stayed up, and then they'll do their research right. on you and be like, "Oh, she is a three point shoot. That's why she knocked it down. Yeah. Point two yeah. seconds left. Boom." Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, okay, Ash. Um, let's get into let's get into your uh, uh, college a little bit before we. I was about to bounce over UT. What did you learn about yourself at playing in college? Um, like some things you took away from where you were as a person, athlete, um, student, uh, until se- like, I don't know, transition from freshman to sophomore year or senior year, anything that you can say, <laughs> I can't ask the question, right? <laughs> uh, like I'm trying to, I'm, I want to say it in a nice way because you know, college can ruin some people. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, college was hard. College was hard. And I think we don't we don't tell people that it's hard because you don't want to ruin you don't want to ruin the experience for them but college is college sports being a college athlete is hard and nobody says that they're not going to tell you like there were so many times I want to quit (laughs) but I didn't nobody says that but there were like what before I got to college I never wanted to quit basketball she had us on the track one day and I just, you know what? I was like, this could all be over right now. I just quit. I just walk away. <laughs> I could just walk away. <laughs> um, but I didn't. And so I think what college taught me was that if I can get through that, I can get through anything. Yep. Because it was that hard. I look back on college and I don't know how I made it through. Like, I don't know. I don't think anybody think knows how the workouts. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think about the workouts we did. B sent me a text the other day. She sent me a message on uh, Instagram mm-hmm. talking about 10 and 10s. Freshman year. Pretty right. We're talking about 10 and 10s. 10 and 10s. You know, we walked in and Logan was like, all he wrote was 10 and 10 on the board. 
10 suicides in 10 minutes. I was like, all it said was 10 and 10. And I was like, y'all, what does that even mean? But you know, we know it's crazy. We just like, what? 10 what? And 10 what? We know it's 10 or something nasty. He was like, Uh, this is all we got. He he read it on the board. That's all we got today is 10 and 10. Wait, what? What is a 10 and 10? I'm looking at y'all like, y'all, I only been here for like three days. What's a 10 and 10? What does that even mean? So you you always know when you when you walk into any kind of workout, especially your your strength and conditioning workout, and they put it up on the board and you are confused and you you've been doing workouts, right? Ain't nothing there's nothing new, but you confused, be prepare that mind. Prepare it. Like look, so you don't see dumbbells and you don't see bench press and stuff that you understand. Expect the worst. It's 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 a always expect the worst. Always get a little prayer together. Get your Gatorade, and uh, that's all I got for you. Cause it was, it was, it was rough, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> we, I'm telling you, I don't know, but I think it did help me overseas. I would say that playing college basketball, it put me in a mindset that no matter how crazy any coach mm-hmm. that I have overseas is, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it don't matter because it don't compare. <laughs> like, it don't compare. Yeah, I, I mean, I can, com- I can compare. I can uh, agree to that, too, because when you play overseas, you're s- sometimes, I wasn't as lucky, but sometimes you will find that one uh, place that you could stay for for a couple years, and it, everything is, is good. And then I feel like maybe most of the time, but I'm only going to speak for myself, most of the time you are playing in different countries, different teams, different philosophies different types of coaches from different countries and our culture is different and uh you gotta know how to adjust every time to a whole new set of team team members and a whole new staff and a whole new country of how they do business that i I agree with you because going through those hard hard moments in college um especially on the court Mm -hmm. i was able to do what i was supposed to do on the court uh, in the midst of all the craziness of having a coach that I didn't like, um, teammates <laughs> you didn't like, the back office Man. presidents, managers that was they was uh, unprofessional to say the say least. The least right? um, yeah, you're not getting paid. How do you continue to go to work and and play how you play? You know. Um, it, you just figure it out. I mean, you're there to do a, a job and you have a level of, of, of uh, co- competitor in you. And that's how I was uh, able to do it. So I'm going to go play. You know, I'm a baller and I'm going to compete, but we're going to have this meeting <laughs> after, <laughs> after this look, practice. I need to know where my money's at. And you gotta I got figure a philosophy it out. though. Go ahead. What's up? Uh, especially, especially overseas, I got a philosophy that you get the percentage of effort that you pay for. True. You, ain't so paying you gave that. me zero dollars, you get zero effort. Yeah. <laughs> because at that point, we're past college where I have played for free. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and now I'm a professional. Yeah. And this is my job. And this is how I pay my bills. So, no, I won't be playing for free. Mm-hmm. So, I give you a courtesy week. Yeah. You know how much I like you, I may give you two. <laughs> but at that point, if I got zero dollars, you getting zero effort. Yeah. And you might catch a little attitude and a little shade about me not having my money. Ooh, yes. not the shade, though. Not and the shade. shade. Not the green. Because if you yeah. asked me, why you acting like that today? Because I see you got on some new Nikes and I ain't got no money. <laughs> like, no, nah, it's a serious, so it's now, a serious thing, man. Right. Oh. So that's that to me, that was, that was a huge thing for me <laughs> overseas. But it always came with the the amount of respect, the amount of courtesy that you give me to let me know if my money's going to be late, let me know. But don't lie to my face, because if you lie to my face, then we're going to have issues about it. Yep. There's a lot of that. I I, I endured a lot of it. It was like every other other season, it was like, okay, I'm going to get paid this season. And then another team was like, not paying and and late. And then just communicate. Like, it was going to be late. I get it. But do you have it? Like, for real, for real. Right. Don't have me out here I mean, playing a whole month. I not, not to, right. I didn't have the, 
I had I had the problem a couple of times, but for the majority of my career, I did not have an issue being paid. Good, which was nice. Now there was a couple of times where I was in some sticky situations. Sticky early in my career. <laughs> yes, sticky situations. Um, okay. So it was definitely an experience. Cool. All right, let's get the let's get uh we're we're talking about pro, but let's have um you walk everybody through your career. So, you know, where'd you play? What's what city, uh, city, if you can remember city, country okay. and, and team. And if you can, if there was anything really special for you uh, as a player and progressed you that year, go ahead and talk about that a little bit. I know you okay. got seven, I know you got seven years. So I do. I got seven years, <laughs> six teams though. Oh, maybe more. Oh, okay. Right. Um, so my first year overseas, Mm -hmm. um 2012 I played in the Czech Republic spent the whole year there I was in Brno the second largest city okay. in Czech Republic um second to Prague I enjoyed it I would I can honestly say that if that experience had not been as good as it was I probably would not have kept playing True. um I had some great teammates that really kind of took me in took me out showed me their country showed me the city mm -hmm. um and I think that really made my adjustment to life overseas a lot smoother than it would have been had I just been by myself um like some people aren't fortunate enough to go to a big city their first year and they're in a small town um you looking at white walls kind of like what we're doing now and it's messing with people's like that can happen over yeah. there especially if you don't have people to talk to so I think I was fortunate enough my first year to have those people and that kind of, that, that really helped for sure. Did you say now, you had, a, was, sorry, did you say you had an American with you? I did. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. I had another American teammate, but also my, my, uh, Czech teammates were also really cool. Like everybody hung out. We had a team party at the end of the year. Yeah. That's good. That's it the was, best type of team. Yeah. yeah everybody kind of meshes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so second year, went to Italy. That was my first year in Italy. Ooh. I was in Umberto. Mm -hmm. I want to say it's south of maybe, no, I think it's south of Perugia, um, which is one of their kind of major cities there. Um, it was fun. It was a smaller town, a lot smaller than what the the place I came from the year before so talking about looking at white walls mm -hmm. yes we looking at white walls um <laughs> but it was it was nice it was centrally located um in Italy so a couple hours maybe south or north I don't know I can't tell you Rome was one way it was only like two hours away there you go uh so I did a lot of traveling my first year my I did a lot of traveling that year in in Italy because I didn't know I'd be going back my parents actually came and visited me. Um, my aunt came over a couple times. And I think that was really like, that was my first, I loved Italy, loved it. Probably the best place I played my entire career, mm -hmm. that, that particular place. I loved them, that city was nice. The fans, it wasn't much in the city. Um, the fans were amazing because we were all that was there and we were good. Yeah. I think we finished third and yeah. Yeah, I've seen some of those Italy games. Y'all, the the crowd, they they pack the house and they get into the game with the banners yeah. and the scarves and the man drums. It was crazy. That's amazing. Yeah. That's that's a that's a like this is a that was nice fun atmosphere to play in. Definitely, like they traveled with us. It was it was so nice. Oh, that's awesome. So 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 that's, nice. Yeah, that's almost like college when um, you got that little group of uh, fans right. that travel with you. That's that's love. Man, it's crazy. Um, All right, tell us about your, okay, third, so your third year over overseas. Well, after that season, I ended up going to China with a, um, a group. And you went the following year. I I went oh, China you went twice. twice. Okay. What was I thinking? <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> went to China twice. So um, the first time we went to China, it was only supposed to be two weeks. Okay. And get there and... The tour went so well that they wanted us to stay really? and play again, play again um, against their top team, their Olympic team. Oh, okay. And so they put on a whole nother tour 
So I ended up being in China for a month, dude. It was how, crazy. How was that? <laughs> it was it was interesting. Uh huh. You know what? I enjoyed it though, cause they're like they they catered to us, especially that second time around. Like they had the hotel, they put us in the uh, the mm-hmm. Olympic training facility. Um, it was nice. I I enjoyed it. Yeah. The food. That, that second that second time you. The food was it's very interesting. The uh the second time you went, I I actually went with you and that was that was yeah. fun. So that was two weeks. Um I was just gra- glad to to get to go to China because it, it was also also like a place I wanted to play, but um mm-hmm. it's hard to get into China first of all with their with their top leagues very. very hard. But to go there actually and see the country and, and be able to play, yeah, and the arenas were the arenas were nice. They are the fans. The fans are crazy. They they like some basketball. The fans like, and they pack the house even for girls. They pack it out. They, like, they pack the house. It was it was like yeah. a big. It was like a big like conference championship game. Like I, man, you know, it was like yeah. I don't even know how to explain it, but it was crazy because <laughs> I know we had played. We had even lost to their their top Olympic team that has been together yeah. for for years, right? And trained, but we had lost, and there were. Uh, fans Chinese fans knocking on our door to like get autographs and take pictures and stuff which was very cool so I liked it it was so like it was crazy man it was fun but our group yeah, that though, second time around was our yeah. group was really fun it was <laughs> Tell, look that little two weeks I was like dang I wish we had some I'm cool I'm still game. waiting on that that Fetty Wap video man yeah I'm no. still waiting on the Fetty Wap video. Fetty Wap? Uh, what video? Somebody, somebody need to send me the Fetty Wap video because we were singing uh, Trap Queen. I don't know where we were. <laughs> I don't remember. It was the last night we was there before we left. Oh, n- nobody slept. I know that. So, somebody got the video. I need I need it. <laughs> All right. Take us to... All right. What's the next Third year? year. Third year. Third, third year, season? okay. So... um. I actually, I didn't have a job, which is crazy. It's coming off my second year. I had killed it. Like, mm-hmm. I was um, first team all Italy. Um, I don't think I got any other awards other than that. <laughs> but I was on the first team. You killed so it. So, it's only five. It's only five people on the first team, though. So, I was first team. What about newcomer? Tim, did you get newcomer the year? Coming off of that? I don't you probably know. did, girl. But... Like, I didn't have no job after that, which was crazy. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, bro, I don't have no job. And so that was a whole nother situation. Okay. Um, so probably around um, no- November. Yeah, I think it was right after my birthday. I-, I got a job going back to check, back to Berno with their EuroLeague team. Okay. And so come to find out it was like a, a trial run period. So I was on like a tryout. Mm. But I was playing in Euro League. Right. That's okay. awesome. I was with it. Um, so we ended up traveling to where we go? Russia, Turkey. Um, I don't know. It was some places. We was awful. We was getting yeah. smacked. It wasn't good. So by the time Christmas rolled around, I was like, get me out of here, please, Jesus. That was one of the times I wasn't getting paid. Mm. Um and so after that I ended out. up and we was getting blown out <laughs> by like fifty. Oh, so real quick for everybody that's watching, uh, maybe on IG Live and that will watch the video later. Uh, let's talk about you, what Euro League is, um, and probably you okay. can you can explain it a little better. But it's uh, it's almost like sometimes I explain it like this: like if you're in college and you're it's it's preseason. Preseason is a different like season than the actual season where you're playing your conference, but. That preseason, you in Euro League, you're playing other countries and you're playing some bad, good teams. They're good teams, yeah. um, and it's highly competitive. It's also it's almost like playing playing the top teams in every other country. That's yeah. basically what it is. That's, 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 that's exactly what it is. It's a different league. That is exactly what it is. <laughs> it's a different yes. league within your own league and season. Yeah. So you just take like. Depending on the country, just to add on to what you're saying, depending on the country, how big the country is, how many teams they have, um, they could have two. They they could have two Euro League teams, one or two Euro League teams, mm-hmm. and could also have one or two Euro Cup teams. So the way it works, like if we were to give like a system, a breakdown of who's the top, like how it yeah. trickles down, 
you got Euro League up here, and then you got Euro Cup, and you got your your country, the league that you're your local you play league. in. You okay. play, yeah. So all the games you play, you can play all the teams in your country that's in your division. And then if you are on one of those top teams, and you're traveling to those other countries to play the top teams in the other countries. And so they break it down into groups, and it is like you're saying, like a conference. And so if you do well, then you move on. And you continue to play in both. So not only are you playing in your league that's in, in your country, mm-hmm. you're also playing in the league that's outside of your country. Mm-hmm. And so those games are happening at the same time. So typically, it, within your country, you're only playing once a week. Right. Um, but then if you're in Euro League or Euro Cup, you're playing twice a week because you got to travel during the week to play those games. And you got to think traveling is like a day. That takes like a day to travel over there. Yeah. And so you might have to travel, hop off a hop off a plane and go to practice. Play the game the next day, hop, go to plane, go home. Shoot. Practice. They might All not all days are slim to none. They, it depends on when you land, because right when you land, like you said, they not wasting no time. We gonna land, right. we're gonna drop your stuff at the hotel. We might not even go to the hotel. We're going right to the gym. Right. Or it's already late and you get there and it's early in the morning. Get to the gym, get to the right. gym. Cause you gotta kinda get the you got to get the, the feel of the uh, local, you know, rims mm-hmm. and the court and just get the feel of everything. Um, what was I going to say? I don't know. I was going to say something else, but continue. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, <laughs> left the team in check. Uh-huh. Um, I actually, right before we played our last EuroLeague game before Christmas, I signed my contract to go play somewhere else. So, I was out of there. <laughs> um, and so, after Christmas... I ended up going back to Italy. I played in Naples. And so I spent the rest of the season in Naples. I want to say the last four months of the season. So, and yeah, that was, that was good. That was good. But that propelled me into the next year. Mm-hmm. So following that season, I think it may have been a month, maybe a couple of weeks after I came home, I got a call from Venice back in Italy. Um, and I signed a two-year deal with them. Right. A one year deal with the option to stay a second year. Okay. Which it was good for the peace of mind because you know a lot of a lot of times you come home and you don't know where you're going. So I figured by signing a two year contract, like I'm good for the next two years. I don't have to worry about whether I'm gonna have a job. Yeah. Going into the next season. So I can come home, I can just be working out, like take take a couple weeks off, take a month off if I need to depending on how my body is feeling, and then I can get right back to it um, and not have, not have to worry about whether I'm going to get a call. Maybe I'm not going to get a call. So I think that was important in making the decision to sign that two-year deal because I was never a person who wanted to go into a season knowing I was going to be there for two years. True. But that was just me. I'm not going to commit to what I don't know. <laughs> right. I don't know how this is going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, um, okay, so that takes us through years five and six, right? No, five. So my fourth and fifth year overseas, I was in Venice. Okay. And that was nice. We played Euro Cup both years. Nice. Um, And so it was nice to be back on the European scene. Um, It was different. It was totally different. And both times we made it out of our group and into the round. I think the first time we made it into the round of 16, and we ended up losing to um, a, t- a team in Turkey, mm. Beshtash, um Happy Pondex, the boy, I tell you. Um, <laughs> okay, that's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Um, and then the following year, we played, we made it to the round of eight. So right before – we would have had to meet the teams. They had restructured the league, and we'd have met some teams from Euro League that was coming down. We lost to another team from Turkey. Uh, Dang. Gosh, I can't think of the name of their team. But they had everybody. Vander Sloot, uh, McBride, uh, what's her name? Where the God was. They played with – um. she went to Rutgers. Well, I can't think of her name. Uh, Post Kievan? No, nah, the, uh, the guard. I can't think of her name. She was with the Sparks. It's, but their their team was stacked. They had like seven Americans. Right. It was like seven of them. We just really couldn't match up. One so first game. So you mean you mean to tell me? Did you did you get in the draft? Or you went straight no. up? So you mean to tell no. me 
you're not a WNBA player, but you get a chance to play against them overseas? Yes. <laughs> okay. Because I, I don't think I don't think that a lot of a lot of uh, basketball uh, young female basketball players understand that d- there's WNBA league at locally, and those WNBA players also go overseas to keep making their yeah. money, and they make the more money overseas. And there's mm-hmm. most of everybody else that's not in the top in those three rounds of the draft, two or three rounds of the draft, and you want to continue to play ball you go overseas like that. We still have lots of opportunity in each, a lot of countries. And there's also one or two different levels of the league over the, over there to play in. So, you know, we don't have, there's not a lot of opportunity in WNBA for most of the girls that may want to play, but you can still play and go overseas and then get to uh, the WNBA like, did you play? I don't think you played with Carla Cortillo. Like Carla, Carla Cortillo yeah, I did play from Puerto Rico. Okay, so yeah, 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 Puerto Rico. She was a rookie in the WNBA at 26, 27, 26. Yeah. So it can happen. You just got to keep working. But I just wanted to make sure everybody that's watching, parents and, and coaches and different uh, and kids out there, understand that too. Yes, it's like Ernie said, it's, it's small and it's very, very hard. You know, I'm hoping – that the league is headed in the right direction. You know, they just um, increased their minimum salary, which is a good thing. It's a very, very good thing. Yeah. Um, but just know that it's – right now it's small. And so there are plenty of opportunities overseas. And I think I took so much time really wanting to be there and, and thinking that I needed the WNBA to validate my career. I did too. Um, and I – I don't think I realized that I didn't need it until what you just said. Like, I'm playing overseas and I'm playing against y'all. And so my thing was, at the end of the game, if you can look me in my eye and you know that I was out there and I'm on your level, that was all I needed. Yeah. Well, even for you, even for you to feel like, you know, you're playing against them and and you're up, their team is stacked with WNBA player after WNBA player and y'all have no WNBA players. (laughs) It, I mean, well, some of your teams, you might, you might not have some people, yeah, no, I mean, not really have their players, but you still can compete. Right. There's some great, I mean, yeah. I'm telling you, there's some great girls that I've played with. Um, and I'm like, dang, you ain't in a WNBA? You ain't no? Oh, okay. It, it, you know. It's just really, it's slim. Yeah, you know, the opportunities, it's not, I was just on a call last night where they're telling people like, yeah, there's, what is there, 12 teams in the league right now? Yeah. And it's 11 roster spots on each team, 11 to 12 spots. So when you go into training rookie. camp, you may be competing for three spots. You it may or be less. Three spots on each team or less. There may really, only be really, one really. Spot. and it's probably like six of y'all trying to get it. And so it's just it might be more than six. There's a bunch of people in there. They probably bring in about fourteen <laughs> extra. They people, really do extra you bodies. Know, you know, like first first round is gonna get they're gonna get a spot. I mean, it, unless they just yeah they're going out and they're they're terrible. I, I don't but that, I don't think that happens. Used to be with guaranteed. First round, right? I don't know huh? if it's still like that. First, the first round used to be guaranteed at least for that first year. I don't know if it's still like that. Mm, okay. I don't know. I don't know much. I didn't play. Oh. <laughs> but uh, <Slut>. yeah. <laughs> well, what were we on your last your last year? Where we at? Um, so year six. We're gonna go with year year six. Okay, so year six. Um. I just left Venice, mm-hmm. dealing with some injuries. Um, that was a rough year. I lost my grandma at the beginning of that year, okay. and I um, came home, bought a car. Okay. Two days before I'm leaving, in a car accident, car total. Wow, I didn't know that. Um, but I went to um, yeah, 2017 was a very very rough year. It was rough. Um, but I went to um. I want to say I was home until like mid October, maybe. Okay. And I'm on my way to get some food. I get a call from my agent. She said, We got your job in Turkey. And so that next day, I go out to get my stuff. You know, we got to go load up on snacks and stuff. So I'm headed to the store to get my snacks. A whole suitcase. You already know. <laughs> whole suitcase and snacks. <laughs> Man. So um, I'm driving in the back of a um, part. It's like the shopping center. As so I'm driving, I see the lady pull to the stop sign. She ran like she taps her brakes like she gonna stop. So I see her stopping, but then she gassed it. Suburban. Ooh. I just bought a new Mustang. Total my car. 
airbag didn't deploy here, but it deployed from up underneath the steering wheel, burned my leg. And I was like, it was crazy because my mom, like my mom typically goes with me, but she wasn't with me that time. And so I had to make that phone call to my parents. Like, y'all, I was just in a car accident. Like, I need y'all to come over here. Yeah. Cars totaled. Um, but I got to leave in two days. So I can't, I got to like, I'm like, am I good? Because you know you can't show up injured. Am I good? Did you have, have, to, did you have like, insurance? Yes. Yeah, so okay, we got the check. We got the check. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad like, you were okay. I didn't know you was in an accident that bad. Like, yeah, no, nobody knew. I didn't. I didn't say nothing. It was like I couldn't. I couldn't say anything because I was leaving in two yeah. days. So you moved. You moved. My parents somewhere. knew. My family knew. Um, but you were okay. Knew. I was good. The Any car scratches was, or anything? Nothing. Was hurt. My body. I mean, of course, you know, got whiplash because she didn't. She didn't hit my car. I tried to go work out the next day like an idiot, and my whole body was hurting. <laughs> I had to be in shape, dog. You know you can't show up overseas out of shape, man. No. So, like, the whole time I'm like, I can't come in. I, like, I can't be hurt. So the first thing I thought when she hit my car was like, oh, my God, am I okay? Like, can't I can't have no no broken bones and no nothing. Like, I can't, I can't have no muscle aches, no nothing. <laughs> Which is crazy because that's my that shouldn't have been the first place my mind went to. Right. Like it should have went to like, is everything good? Like, are you okay? Like mentally nah, it, was, it was crazy. So everything was good. I left I had it overseas. Um I had to go back and get it back. I think your your microphone is that that is it dying? Hold on. There we go. Yeah. Can you hear me? So let me see. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's good. All right, okay. Cool. So, get to Turkey, um, and because of summer, like, it's been a crazy, crazy year, man, like, some a lot of stuff happened, a lot of stuff that made me sit back and realize, I think that was when I started working out, like, I changed my entire workout, because I was coming off a bad injury, Achilles, like, not officially torn Achilles, but, like, had an Achilles injury, um, but that's when I started working out with Sean. And so I was going in with the mindset of like, y'all said I wasn't nothing. Like y'all told me I wasn't shit. I'm about to show y'all uh -oh. that I am the shit. Like <laughs> when I tell you my whole mindset flipped to like, I don't care who you are. I don't care what name you got on the back of your jersey. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. I'm coming for your head every game. Right. Something happened over that summer where my mindset just, the switch flipped, everything clicked. When I tell you my confidence was on a thousand, I was giving people buckets. It didn't matter who you were. I was in Turkey for maybe like two months. Came home for Christmas. Well, I, I left in the middle of the night because it was not a really good place to be. Okay. <laughs> Pretty sure I had a bullet hole in my window. What? Um, <laughs> electricity. The apartment window or like your car? Yeah. The apartment window. Girl. And then pay the electricity bill. The, the electricity went out. That was probably one of the craziest places I've ever been. And it really? was crazy. Okay. Snuck out in the middle of the night time. How far um, how far were you from the the international airport? Let's talk about this. I was a what let's see. It was like an hour drive to the local airport, an hour flight to Istanbul Airport. <laughs> so I had to spend the night in Istanbul uh -huh. with a hoodie on. Because the people from my team were like affiliated with the Turkish Federation, it was crazy. Okay. Um, so I was in the, I was in the hoodie and I was like <laughs> laid down, like yes, it was crazy. Wow. Snuck out of there and chilled at home. You know, that was the one time I got to like spend Christmas with my family. Like the whole, I think I was home for all of December, January first. I got a job in Hungary. And that may have been the best basketball of my career. Okay. The best. Hungry. Um, you said hungry? Hungry. Good. Yep. Okay. I hungry. Know you played it in was, hungry. I enjoyed it, honestly. I really liked hungry. Everything's super I, cheap. I heard some it good money go a really hungry. long way. Yes. It is I just cold. Was that your last year? Or that was the second, the second part of that season. That was the, that was the second part of that season. So I think that's when I really made the decision that you know I knew I was coming toward to the end of my career, and I knew that I was, it was 
it was going to be on my terms. And I think that was my mindset going into my last couple of years. Like I didn't know after I got injured that I was, if I was going to be able to play again. And so I worked my butt off to get back to a point where I felt like I was comfortable. I could be successful. And I was going out to secure the bag for that last season, man. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, um, <laughs> coming off of that year, I, um, I played, I played really, really well. I like, I can't even explain it. I was in a whole nother mindset. Nothing was going to stop me. Um, so was there another my season last year after Hungary? Yeah. Okay. After Hungary, um, I signed and went to Israel. And that's where I finished up in Israel. Oh, lucky dog, man. Dang. <laughs> Israel is like the place. You know. I, when I would, whenever I was playing, we were playing, I, I would always hear, I don't know if it's the same now, but. Like Israel is the is a fun place to, to be. There's pretty good competition. Um, the locals are pretty good, and yes. then uh, there's most WNBA players go there, or um, just players that have been playing overseas that are uh, yeah. you know they 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 can play, and yeah. it's small and people can you can hang out with people and it's just fun. Oh, and everything's so close. It was oh, like it yeah. was. I loved Israel. Okay. Awesome. I didn't How's travel as much as I would have wanted to. Oh, uh, we finished. Who we finished? I think we finished. Yeah, man. <laughs> we were really young. Yeah. And so we were really, really young. Um, I think that kind of also that that took a lot out of me just having to like teach a lot more. Yeah. Then I was at twenty nine. I'm one of the old I'm the second oldest person on my team at that point and I'm like it was so much I'm thinking I'm just going out here to play now because you know I'm older I'm kind of established now I'm a bet you look yeah. I'm a I'm a bet <laughs> um, but we actually you know we weren't expected to do that well mm-hmm. we ended up finishing seven we played in the Israeli cup okay. which was a huge accomplishment for us because nobody expected us to be any good and we were like two games out of finishing top What's the Israeli you Cup? You know what? We might have finished six. Is that almost like, like, if you're playing in college, was that almost like the conference championship game? Or is that the whole league So, game? well, the, um, so each country has, like, a cup. Like, you play for the cup. And yeah. so every country does it differently about who qualifies and mm-hmm. how, how they do the qualification for the cup. So, like, in Italy, excuse me, in Italy, it's normally the top, four teams at the end of the first round. So after you've played everybody <clears throat> one time through, they take the top four teams and they go play for the cup. So the cup is like, I don't even know what to compare it to. Like it's yeah. just a separate little tournament. So it's Within only, it's like a single elimination. So yeah. kind of like a final four. Like cool. maybe if you want to, but not as, it's really big within the country, but I wouldn't say it's on our level of a final four. So like you're not going to win the championship. If you win this, you're gonna win the cup championship, but that's not like winning the season championship. Yeah, because it because it, it can all change. You can still got a whole round to play. Right. Through. And then but the cup you know gives how you like do. one opportunity. Yeah. You know how people do like teams do that. You know that's the first yeah. round, but then get right, on the little get the playoffs. They done bring right. bringing somebody else in. I'm like what? Wait a minute. Exactly. So exactly. Okay. So we played in the cup. We played the top team in the cup, and we kind of – we took them to the brink, but not really, like – we gave them a tough game, right. but they beat us. At the end, I think we kind of ran out of gas with, like, four minutes to go. Yeah. And okay. It was just – it was a wrap for that. Really quickly, um, um, tell, tell me – tell us about the uh, the age, the ages, because you were 29 as a vet, seven, seven-year-old, seven-year-old vet, um, and I don't think – a lot of girls that are looking to play uh, overseas or they're in their rookie year realize that uh, you could be playing with very, very young players. Yes, I know I had my first young. year, I had a six, they were 16. I had 18 year olds. Yeah, these were, these were high school, these were high school kids. So okay. they were, um, but they were the, the best ones in the country. Now okay. we did have the top high school kids in the country. Got they it. were good for their age and they're going to be really, really good. Okay. Um, but when you think about them and then you think of the level of competition, so we're playing against our also top Americans. Sure. Yeah. Some of the Americans there are like the top, they could be some of the top players in the WNBA or yeah. some of the better players in the WNBA. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just really like we, 
it's not on the same level. Yeah. There's a, there's but a little bit of a difference. But the experience, you pick up the experience throughout. So I think that was that was important for them to get that experience. It was a lot like for a lot of them, it was their first time playing mm-hmm. in the first division. And it the Israeli league is really like it's short. And so mm-hmm. you only play you play everybody twice, I think. One time home, one time away. And then they break you into these little groups. <laughs> Like, I don't know, man. I can't tell you. Look, I got so much stuff in my brain now. I can't even break down. I got you. I got you. It was crazy. I know. I know. I know you got to, I know you got to get back to studying because you got, is it, what, is it midterm? I'm off today. Are you off? I'm off today. So before we get, yesterday. (laughs) Good. Before we get off of this, I I definitely want to get some um, tips about COVID from you to the kids out there today at, at all the various levels, you know, high school, college and pro. Um, but then I definitely, let's, let's talk about your retirement or transition from basketball to you're in law school now in Houston. Let's just talk about that a little bit for the older folks that are vets and they might not know, um, you know, what they're doing or Mm -hmm. they might be looking to go to law school too. So let's, let's share that story. Um, so I think I I always knew I wanted to go to law school and I think I kind of somewhere along the way I got lost in being a professional basketball player. Um, I took the LSAT. I took a, I took a course um, for the LSAT after my first year overseas. And then I was like, I just can't focus on this because I'm focused on basketball right now. Basketball is my thing. Yeah. But towards the end of my career, um, after I left Hungary, and I came home, I took the LSAT, and I, I applied to law schools, and I decided, you know, if I get in, it's going to be something I'm really going to consider. I can defer for a year if I decide to go back overseas, mm-hmm. but ultimately, I was actually overseas when I got the, I got my first letter of, um, my first acceptance letter, um, and of course, I told my teammates, we celebrated it. It was, it was nice. Aww. So um, did you, did you take but, it while you were home or did you take it overseas? Yeah, no, I took it, I took it in the summer. And okay. so I was able to write my, uh, write my personal statement and everything and apply. Yeah. In like August, September. Um, so but I had actually decided to go back overseas and I was going to defer. I had initially decided to go back. One more go. One more go. I was like, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do one more time. I got one more in me. Uh-huh. And told my agent I was going back. And I think I went to. I went to happy hour, and I was like, I just can't do this. Like, yeah, I didn't have it in me, and I think that's when I knew. I was like, I don't. I don't have that fire that I had. Like, I was excited for the process. I was excited to get up and go work out, and I just did not feel that excitement that I had the years prior and so the coach I told my agent I was like you know I just don't I don't think like I said is it too late for me to change my mind if it's too late I'll go ahead and I'll go but if it's not like I need you to tell them that I just can't do it yeah the coach actually reached out and was like you know heard you got into law school heard you want to do it we just really want you to, to come play for us come help us out and I said look I could totally come over there and I could play one more season I said, but it wouldn't be fair to you because my heart just really is not. That's true. That's true. And she was like, okay, I completely understand. And so at that point, like I knew, and I have not, it's crazy. And I know some people say when they give it up, they miss it. I think because I gave it up on my terms. Yeah. Like I was just, I have not looked back and been like, I should have still been playing overseas, like not one time this year. Granted, the other day, that's good. Online law school, I am kind of like, you know what? I could have did this overseas, though. I totally could have taken on high school overseas. But it's, I, I found something that I enjoy, and I'm excited about the way I was excited about basketball. And I that's think that, that was a huge thing for me. So it I is. had a plan, and I know there's a lot of people who are playing who don't have a plan we, we just okay. timed out on instagram that's all right okay we can get it get there's it a lot of people who were are we live now what did it say you started it over no are you back in there, I didn't mess oh, we it in there. don't worry about it we in there not in there. we in there Oh my God! <laughs> I don't 
don't know. I don't know what it's doing. It's all good. But <laughs> okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of people that are still playing who just really don't have a plan. And so, you know, if I, if I went back overseas, I probably would have played until I couldn't have played anymore. But I think because like I had a plan in place, I knew what I wanted to do after. I think that's huge for people who are trying to make the transition out of professional basketball. The scariest part is not knowing. I think having a support system around you, my parents, my mm-hmm. family, like, they've been huge and just letting me know, like, no matter what, they're going to help me. Cause I was, I was scared, honestly, like we're used to making money overseas. Like, and then you come home, like, I don't have no cash flow coming in. I had to take out student loans just like everybody else. I'm a normal person just like y'all. Yeah. And so that part to me was scary. And I think I wanted to be secure, secure. Mm -hmm. And it took, me stepping out on faith to and just hoping, you know, hoping and praying that everything is gonna be okay and it has worked out for the best. I got it. Look, you want me to tell you my GPA? What's your GPA? I got 3.59. 3.6, I heard. <laughs> Look, so you know that's crazy, I'm, man. Um, that's good. Law school. Thank you, thank you. I know, and it. it's not and when I came in they was like y'all gonna be fighting for C's and I was like what is a C I ain't never heard no what C is in my C? life what is that <laughs> what is a C <laughs> but yeah um so yeah that's transition to law school it's been girl great. that's crazy because I remember I took I took the GRE overseas in, in Lisbon when I was in Portugal my first year how was that they got international um you can test testing you can places. yeah I was like girl I took the GRE a couple times no, that's not for me. They're testing. Nah, I mean. <laughs> me neither. I didn't do that well on the test. Tests. I kept getting not, better. Not because, I'm, like, right. I'm, like, I'm just a cash cow for y'all. I, I quit. Right. I don't want to keep taking it. Right. I mean, I, I had decided if I didn't do the LSAT, if my score was good enough to get me into one place, that's all I needed. I'm not gonna, I'm not coming back to take this three-hour, six-hour test. I was so mentally exhausted after that test. Mm-hmm. I was in proper seat those. <laughs> what uh what are you at U of H or what school are you at? So I'm at Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall, okay. T- TSU, yeah. Ooh, okay. Right across the street from U of H. Boom. Congratulations yeah. on that. Real, real. Thank you, thank you. Uh thank we're gonna do a big you. when you when you get that certificate. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. lastly, yeah. uh thanks okay. for sharing your your transition, um, transitioning from basketball to your second career because you're what, what are you 20 29 30 30 you're, your, second se- career. you're your second career like I, I also don't think that um professional athletes understand that we are going into a whole nother career it, even if it's the mm-hmm. same thing from what we got our major in we have mm-hmm. we have deferred that and not not kind of studied that so don't don't be hard on yourself. I'm, I was very hard on myself, and my retirement was Where not you good. Mean, I've been you retired mean. for four years, and I'm still trying to figure out, figure it out, and make things work. But what what I can say is, don't be hard on yourself um, when you're transitioning and you don't know what you want to do, or um, you just you you can't figure it out. Just do things to help you figure it out. If it's uh, work with kids, or or go volunteer with different gyms, or whatever the industry you want to do. I would say right. for kids that are playing ball right now, do that when you come home in the summer. So you yes, make your network. I 100% agree. You're, you're building your network and you're tasting these different industries, these different job roles. Um, you might come home and get certifications. You might come home and do a programming mm-hmm. and coding so that you can have that certificate. And then you go overseas and you play in ball. And then you're doing your, your coding um, projects and you're building your portfolio so that when you get out, you can already be a dang uh seasons type of developer you can probably yep. do some remote coding while you're overseas especially with yep. the kind of Side social job, media yep. and everything that we have now we, we didn't really kind of have that when we played um mm-hmm. but we were just kind of on the cusp of that but that's that's a big thing that i would tell um players right now getting ready to do their rookie year or their three four years in take that time when you come home to taste different things Start little yeah. businesses and see if you can keep them floating while you're overseas. 
get yes. a couple start to try and get different different streams of income and um be creative you have this we really have this time from 20 to 30 to taste things because i'm 32 you're 30 and we're still young you're getting ready to be a lawyer yeah that's the plan <laughs> like you get ready to be a lawyer that's the plan right and it's definitely I'm, hard though like yeah. and I, I get what you're saying because we're not like when I'm introducing myself I don't start with I'm a basketball player mm -hmm. like I play basketball <clears throat> and I think I was actually at a um a mixer one night for an internship and the guy I start talking to this guy and he's like well tell me about yourself like what did you what, what what's your story where'd you come from um and I said well I play basketball overseas and he said you what and I said, well, I play, I play basketball overseas. And he was like, you should have started with that. Like, and so I don't know because for us, we didn't have to do that. Like, we were just known as the basketball players. Yeah. And I think I've tried so hard to, to step away from being known as the basketball player and trying to stand on my brain instead of my athletic ability yeah. and being known as the basketball player. That yeah. I've kind of, kind of pushed that. I've tried to – I haven't tried to push it aside, but – it's kind of got pushed to the side, but people want to know that, that we're basketball, like that we're former athletes. Yeah. This is what they want to know. And you should lead with that because that is a conversation starter. And it shows that you have those skills, those teamwork and skills, those I'm going to get it done by any means necessary type of skills. Like there's so many skills that we have as athletes. Discipline. That regular people don't oh. have. Yeah. Yes. And so knowing that and being able to, to kind of put that into words and tell people, like, I'm still learning. I had a whole thing with interviews that I just really didn't know how to do because who had been on interviews? Who were we interviewing That's true. before? That's true. That much. That's true. So, so it's, um, it's new. That's crazy. And it's hard. Yeah, it is very new. It's just, it's just un, uh, is it say, uncharted territory, how they say it, the yes. little, this little phrase. So when I retired and I started to, uh, do my training business and things like that. But then when I, when I did have to kind of pivot to a job, man, I'm telling you like those resumes, give me the heebie jeebies and I don't know how to format it in these interviews, but why I say is to prepare yourself to talk and be comfortable just talking to people about a job that you may want, do those internships, do those internships in the summer. And I'm not saying, yeah. I, know, I know how athletes are. We want to go work out, do the thing, and then have all day to chill. You can still have all day to chill. Take a couple, you know, take a couple <laughs> days, a couple days out of the week, go two hours, go to three hours, uh, mm -hmm. and just volunteer. Where, mm -hmm. At anything that you think you might be interested in when you, when you uh, retire, or even if it's fashion and you're interested in, in that right now, right then. Yeah. If you're interested in architecture, if you're interested in real estate, you might be able to find an internship you get paid for. Go right. taste things so that yes. you Reach have the people. I mean, if I would have been doing that in the summertime after seven years of playing, I would have been able to most likely transition into a, a job or a role a little easier, have that instant cash flow um, and income, not cash flow, but income coming in mm -hmm. to where I could use that and I could set myself up at home and then I could probably start saving and, and investing that money and, and making my own little business that I wanted to do. Yeah. But everybody's, everybody's uh, journeys is, is different. And as long as you keep going, it's like, it's really like this. That's how your journey yes. is. But as it's long really as you good. keep going, <laughs> you probably were going to get to spots where everything starts to line up and, and guys mm -hmm. keep your head up out there because my four years has been rough but I, I am coming into my own and, and this four years is actually I feel like it's building me up for something that I really want in the future and if I hadn't gone through this tough tough time um mm -hmm. I, I, whatever I get in the future I might not be ready for that opportunity so just got to keep going Anything, anything that you can um, give advice to the basketball players right now during COVID? I mean, is this a, is this, should we be looking at this as athletes as a positive opportunity or not? Um, I would say it could be positive, but it could also be negative. Um, so right now you do have a lot of time on your hands just because everything has shifted to online. And so I want to encourage people to get out of the house especially if you're living in the house get into your driveway and dribble a ball 
Um, don't just sit on your couch and watch, net watch Netflix all day. You could walk around in circles in your house if you would like. Walk around the house in circles. <laughs> just, just do Move it. around. Just yeah. don't sit still because we don't want to get stuck in this sedentary lifestyle that we're being put into right now. It's hard for me right now. I live in an apartment. I've been trying to figure out a way to work out without jumping around because I got neighbors below me and neighbors above me. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and it's difficult. And so I want to go outside and run, but I also know that there, is, there are dangers of going outside. Right. But I do feel like if you live in a house, you live in a neighborhood, it is important for you to be able to go outside and dribble the ball. That does not, you're not coming into contact with anybody by being in your driveway. Yeah. Down the stairway. You put on a mask if you want. Look. Bandana but, up. Right, bandana up. This is time. This is a time for everybody to just really sit back and, you know, you can fall in love with this process of getting better. You have the time to do it right now because right. things are going to open back up. And when they do, are you going to be ready? Are you going to be ready to perform? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be in shape? Have you been doing anything? And or have you just been watching Netflix? Yeah. I mean, we're going to know. We The time is only going to tell. Like in, in another month or another uh, two months, when we get back to being able to be training and getting into the gym and going back to work and, and whatever for the summer, or even if we don't get to the AAU season and we get we go right up until school season, we mm -hmm. are going to know who was working out and taking advantage of this time off, getting smarter, getting better, having more clarity about what they want and their goals. Like you say, getting in shape, losing weight. Hey, if you're a baller and if you need to lose five pounds, if you need to lose 10, this is the, this is the time. This is the time. Give me your workout. So I can lose it with y'all. What? What happened? I said, send me y'all workout so I can lose it with y'all. <laughs> send, you, send you to work with the workout. Send me to work. Send, send me to work out. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity and you will, guys, you're going to hit your, you're going to kick your butt, uh, yourself in the butt. If you do, if you do not do something that is worthwhile and that can change you and, tra and transform you and, and, um, uh, push you into your next level of success. When you get back to running and stuff, you don't want to be the one that's gassed out on the wall because right. it's it's so clear. Now, if you can talk about every show under the sun, we don't know what you were doing. I'm not saying you don't have to catch up, but you got to multitask. You better make sure your workouts are great and you're giving 100% and then you still can chill and watch Hulu, Netflix, all that. It's a lot of time throughout the day. It's a lot. It's too much time. time right now. Especially you if you get up at much time. six and get no, your stuff done. Anybody saying that? You ain't got to do that now. Look, Here we go, I'm AP. Not Come on, AP. Look, you got, because I know y'all on, y'all, school is online right now for, for our high school, middle school athletes. No, bump that. Get school up. is, y'all are, y'all are doing school online. I know y'all don't have that much stuff to do. And Not I know deep. that y'all probably down by like three o'clock. So when your time is up, I'm not going to tell you got to get up early because I don't get believe up. you get up early if I don't have to. Oh. Um, when your time is done, <laughs> you should go dribble the ball. You should be working on your skills. What that does not mean, I'm not saying that you got to go out and you got to run two miles. But if you know that your ball handling is weak, mm -hmm. then you need to be dribbling the ball. If you know your footwork is off, then you need to be outside doing some footwork. And you don't need a you don't need a ball for your jump shot footwork. You don't need or your you, defensive you don't footwork need a ball for that. or your screen right. footwork. Like I'm telling you, 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 it's just so much opportunity. And don't there's no excuse on I didn't know what to do. Come on, guys, you have every social media at your hands. Back in high school, there was no it social. There was they was it was AOL. I don't even know Google was around. Who might have been coming up? What? What is, what is a social <laughs> oh, media? Man. For real? No, right? There wasn't. There wasn't. Yeah, no the when I was in high school. It's the messenger. What? Yeah, it's the messenger. Stop. <laughs> I'm serious. You can you can put you can, you can type in uh, footwork for uh, um, two dribble pull up, and you have all these videos that come up on YouTube. You have all this Instagram, Facebook. There's no read. There's a lot of coaches giving free content out. There's no reason yeah. for us not to know something. You might not have it in order the way you might need it from a coach, 
but you have uh, those ideas. And what this time is about is also you don't need a coach. You need to work your, you can, it's good if you did, but you don't actually need a coach. So you, what you need to do is work that muscle of getting up and getting out and going to do it. Because I know, I don't remember um, having an actual uh, trainer. I, it, when I was in high school, there was no, there was no this thing where everybody had a trainer and we went to do group it's training. training. It was your high school coach. Hey, what's a trainer? What's a trainer? It was your high school coach and, um, or it was you in the gym and maybe it was you. your parents or your homies like in there rebounding. That was it. Like yes. that was it. There was no, there was no beast barn here in Austin, Texas. There was no like sport court to go to and people were just getting shots up. Mm -mm. It was, it was you. A lot of trainers now though have moved online. So they are training people remotely. So there really are no excuses. There's no excuses. There's no excuse. So, but at the same time, if you, don't have the you money, want it, if, if you don't have money and you don't, you, and you don't put that pressure on your parents, like get yeah, your no. butt outside and work for it. You need to be yeah. working on your own for two months straight so that when you ask your parents, hey, can I go train with this coach? They're going to say what? If they can afford it, they're going to say yes, because I saw the work you put in and I understand you want it. Sorry, I'm about to get off on a, a, a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, you passionate about this. I am. I, am. I just want them babies yeah. to, wrong want them to do that. right and, and get all the success they can. Yes, indeed. I appreciate you being on the show. No problem. No problem. So Any, I'm about to go make me some dinner. Dinner. Any last like little tidbits or, or, or words of advice? Um, oh, just we talk believe in yourself. That's yeah. like the main thing right now. Like, you got to believe you can do it. Can't nobody believe for you mm -hmm. you got to believe in you totally that's the main thing if you don't believe you can do it why should somebody else believe you can do it that's true and i look i used to have a saying What's your because saying? there were times that you know i didn't i didn't want i didn't know if i wanted to go overseas because i didn't know if i could make it okay um i was afraid to admit that i wanted to play in the WNBA because I didn't know if I was good enough. But then I realized, like, if your dreams don't scare you, they're not really dreams. Like, mm -hmm. if your dreams don't, they're not big enough if they don't scare you. You should be dreaming out of this world. Like, I can do whatever I put my mind to. Mm -hmm. And if your dreams don't scare you like that's like, dang, you know, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can get there. Like, mm -hmm. that's what you're striving for, though. That is something to strive for. So don't say, you know, that's too big. I don't want to be that person. If you want to be the president, say you want to be the president. Mm -hmm. Like, so I live by that motto. Mm -hmm. if your dreams, look, if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. That's how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing with your, with your goals. Yeah. With your, when you're making your goals, make them a little bit outside that attainable box. Cause that you get that feeling in your stomach. Like, I don't know. Can I do that? But that right. means that that holds you accountable to try and, and see yes. if you can make it. Same. You're scared to, if you're like if you're scared to try, like fear holds a lot of people back. And I was afraid to admit those dreams. I was afraid to say, you know, that's, that's what I want because I didn't want to fail. And I didn't want people to know I failed. Mm. But if I'm not striving for something, why am I doing it? Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of doing it if I'm just okay being mediocre? Yeah. And, and it that's also, what it came down to. Yeah. It also, like you said, you were the fear. I think fear stops a lot of people from making goals and being honest with themselves. I know I mm -hmm. had the goal of since being little, I had a little, I had a little black Barbie doll of the first little WNBA had a little magnet on her hand. I was like, yeah. that was Lisa, that's Lisa Leslie. I don't know if that was really Lisa Leslie, but that's my Lisa Leslie bar. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wanted to be in the WNBA since I, before I could even remember, but I, mm -hmm. I, I did, I didn't make it. And there was, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know what to do after that. But when I got wind of, okay, mm -hmm. you can go overseas. And I started playing a couple years and I was like, I let go of that disappointment I had mm -hmm. with myself. So I, I was kind of disappointed, honestly. Um, I let go of that. And I was like, I can, I'm still, I can, 
be a great player overseas. I'd still be a b- good player, a great player. I'm playing against WNBA players. I see them overseas. Yeah. We're all mixing. So yeah. the opportunity is there. It's just the opportunity to, to, to uh, shine with them, play with them, play against them, and, and mm-hmm. continue to have fun and do what you do on your scale. It don't matter. So I did yeah. let that go. Uh, maybe it might have been after my rookie year, actually, or two, yeah. two or three in, into it. But, yeah. Once I realized I wanted my summer all free, <laughs> I wanted my summer after I hadn't been playing for eight months. Yeah, we also do have a, you know, we also have do have an advantage of just playing inter- internationally. We get that summer off. We get a little break. The right. Then you it's get hard to be a WNBA game. player. You play year Yeah, you play year, year round. round. So it's and tough. that's all, yeah. I commend those. Right. And, and WNBA, I do too. you got to play tough, tough for three months. And then you got you yes, still gotta you have that level of toughness for another yeah. six to eight, it's depending a, on it's how it's a dog fight. Woo! Man. And your body? Oh, it is. That's dedication. Damn. So yeah. all right, man. I'm gonna let you go. Get that dinner. Send me a pic <laughs> of what you made. I, will. I appreciate you being on this. You know I love you. Um drop your, your no social problem, media man. if you want, uh, so people can get in touch with you and just follow you and stay, stay, stay connected. You want me to drop it in the in the chat? No, nah, you just say it. Drop drop it, voice. Drop it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. My bad. Um, I'm light bright. <laughs> light bright. Spell that. Light bright with the L I T three B R I T E. Oh, is there a thirty three on there? It might be thirty three. <laughs> Try to be too fancy with the name now. <laughs> you know what? Light let's bright. See. Let's see. Let's see. Light bright, 33. Just had to check it. L-I-T-3-B-R-I-T-E-3-3. Light bright, 33. That's Instagram or that's Facebook too? That's Instagram, Ashley Fontanet on Facebook. Ashley Fontanet. You, you guys, may not, you you may right not be able to find me. Boom. All right. Peace out, my homie. All right, man. Deuces. <laughs>